tuturor, good morning. Înainte de a trece la discursul oficial pregătit în limba engleză, aș vrea să vă adresez și în limba română din partea întregii echipe a reprezentanței Comisiei Europene în România. Da. Mulțumesc. Iulia, te... da. Suntem ok acum? Acum e ok? Da? Este bine acum? Da? Atunci, încă o dată, bine ați venit și uh, aș fi vrut să încep, vreau să încep prin a vă transmite și din partea întregii echipe a reprezentanței Comisiei Europene România o urare de an nou mai bun, mai așezat și multă sănătate pentru dumneavoastră și familiile dumneavoastră. Convenția socială împarte timpul în ani și zile, dar iată că la începutul acestui an nu avem. Pentru că multe, foarte multe din provocările anului trecut continuă nestingerite și în acest an 2023. Sunt ani dificili, de pandemie, post-pandemie, război, speranța păcii, ale căror realități ne-au răsturnat credința într-o pace eternă și într-o creștere economică fără sfârșit. Ca întotdeauna, într-un moment de criză personal, național sau european, ne întoarcem cu siguranță la valori pentru a găsi încredere și forță, iar această aliniere axiologică cu valorile noastre europene rămâne sursa noastră de putere, unitatea noastră europeană. So, welcome. Welcome to the launch of the Swedish Presidency of the Council of the European Union. I am joined by Her Excellency, the Swedish Ambassador to Romania, Therese Haydn, and the Romanian Minister of Foreign Affairs, our traditional uh, partner for these events, Mr. Bogdan Aurescu. Um, I, we are also very happy to be joined by almost all our colleagues from the Team Europe, so European Union ambassadors, as well as our colleagues from the Republic of Moldavia, Ukraine and uh, Norway. At the helm of the Council for the next months, Sweden will take the task of navigating the momentous challenges of current EU affairs in close cooperation with the European Commission. But before detailing the Swedish mandate, allow me to congratulate Czechia for its term and to thank Ambassador Halka Kaiserova for our cooperation in promoting European policies in Romania. Security, competitiveness, the green transition and democratic values are the priorities of the Swedish presidency. They dully reflect unprecedented challenges that the European Union is currently facing while bringing together key European Union policies. And we wish the Swedish Presidency all success in achieving the goals of its mandate. The unprovoked, brutal and illegal Russian war against Ukraine, the energy crisis and its many economic fallouts have repeatedly tested in 2022 European Union and resilience as well as the strength of the values on which the European Union stands, democracy, solidarity, freedom, humanity. Acting in unity and with solidarity, we have shown our resolve and capacity to act and defend what we hold precious, to break energy dependence and impose sanctions against Russia, and to act as a global stability anchor and as a global power at a scale unseen before. We are deeply committed to continue supporting Ukraine and its people and welcome the priority of the Swedish presidency to continue these efforts and to foster the security of our union internally and externally. Support to Ukraine will include, continue to include political, financial, humanitarian and military aid, support for reconstruction as well as continued access of Ukrainians through the Temporary Protection Directive to the European Jobs, Housing, Education, Training and Healthcare. In 2022, 
Almost 20 billion euros were mobilized for Ukraine by the European Union and member states for these purposes. And we will continue providing this support steadfast as long as needed. And we also stand by the Republic of Moldova. We commend its generosity in taking in Ukrainian refugees in spite of its economy being hit hard by the effects of Russia's war. By giving Ukraine and Moldova EU candidate status last year, in a historical and historically quick unanimity, the EU recognized that the future of these countries and their citizens lies within the European Union. And in this context, I would also like to thank Romania for its multi-dimensional support and solidarity provided to both Ukraine and Moldova and for being a stability and democracy anchor in the region itself. Stability and security of the Union are also linked to the Schengen area. And the Commission firmly believes that Romania should be part of it and will continue supporting it to reach this objective. We welcome the commitment of the Swedish Presidency to tackle the high and volatile energy prices which affect the Union's households, businesses and their competitiveness. Throughout 2022, the Commission put forward several measures to reduce the energy cost for families and businesses and we reduced our dependence on Russia to a very large extent and proposed measures ensuring we are safe for this winter and already preparing for the winters to come. In 2023, pursuing the repower objectives and electricity market reform will provide structural solutions to foster security of supply and price stability. Next to short-term measures, we must also steer the medium and long-term transition to carbon neutrality by 2050. For we know that climate change is faster than our capacity to adapt. So addressing climate change and nature degradation requires now resolute action and above all political will. Sweden, which has set out to meet 100% of its electricity needs from renewable sources by 2040, is a front runner among member states showing that ambition and political will can successfully drive the green transition setting economic growth on a sustainable path. And accelerating the rollout of renewables, energy saving and investments have been an integral part of the Commission's crisis management measures. And the implementation of the Green Deal remains, of course, high on our agenda. We welcome the priority given by the Swedish Presidency to put Fit for 55 into action and speed up the green and just transitions. Growth and cohesion among member states also rest on the fundamentals of the rule of law and democracy, which today we must defend against increasing adversity, both from the outside as well as unfortunately from the inside of our union. And this is also part of the Swedish presidency's priorities during this term. In 2022, the Commission adopted its last report on Romania under the cooperation and verification mechanism. As for all member states, reporting will continue under the annual rule of law report, based on a process which is, of course, aimed to safeguard and protect the rule of law. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to address 2023 opportunities in my final part of the intervention. As I mentioned, the EU core values, European cultural heritage is among them, an indestructible link that builds bridges and brings the people of Europe together. And this year, Timisoara is a European capital of culture, a standing proof of Romania's belonging and contribution to the European Union. I look forward to visiting the city and its events, as I am sure many Europeans will do as well, and thus get to know Romania better. Timisoara also stands as a symbol of Romania's regained freedom and democracy 34 years ago. And looking towards upcoming European elections, the representation will continue to engage with the young generation to promote and protect democratic values. We want to ensure that the European project will remain strong and vibrant 
in their hands, in the hands of the next generation. Romania is a strong member of the European Union that has constantly closed in with the fellow members since succession 16 years ago. Over these 16 years, Romania received about 80 billion euro from the European Union and paid 26.4 billion euro to the budget. This results in a plus of 53 billion euro that Romania received from the European Union for its development and modernization in all areas. The signature last year in Alba Iulia of the agreements to operationalize the cohesion funds until 2027 clears the path for additional 31.5 billion euros reaching Romania's citizens and regions in the years to come. This will come in addition to the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, whose implementation started last year. And the Commission, as you know, is currently assessing the second payment request submitted by Romania in December last year based on progress with its ambitious plan, which comprises 507 milestones and targets. As part of the recovery plans, the EU will only finance results and performance on these milestones and targets, reforms being a key element in the process. Infrastructure development, digitalization in the broadest sense, education, modernization of the health and energy systems and pollution reduction are key elements in Romania's plan. And by its end in 2026, the plan's implementation should set Romania sustainably on a path of economic growth and competitiveness for the sake of its people. Dear guests and dear partners, 2022 was the year when Romania became a frontline EU member state, bordering a neighbor under attack and offering a generous humanitarian support that has made headlines. 2022 was also the year when our rep the representation of the European Commission to Romania became a frontline representation, with many new professional as well as personal and emotional challenges. I would like to thank my team in front of this esteemed audience as well for their hard work and courage during the last year. And I end by saying that the European Commission will continue to support Romania on its European path and that we look forward to cooperating with the Romanian authorities and the Swedish presidency, as well as the wider diplomatic community for promoting the European agenda this year as well. Thank you very much. And now we move on to the main attraction, the Swedish presidency. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Mrs. Kiriak. Buna dimenatsa, binatsvenit, welcome. I'm really glad to see all of you uh, that came here this morning, those online following us as well. I, uh, I'm both excited and honored to be presenting the Swedish presidency in the company of uh, Foreign Minister Aurescu and the head of the European Commission Office, Mrs. Kiriak. But before I start my presentation, I, I do also want to thank the two previous presidencies, France and the Czech Republic, uh, for we make up the current trio together. And uh, thank you, really, for all the important work that you've done in Brussels uh, and here in Romania, uh, having tackled multiple crises, the continuation of the COVID pandemic, the outbreak of the aggression war on Ukraine, the continuation of that war, and other effects of that, such as the energy crisis. Uh, thanks for being a trio partners. I personally took up my position uh, here in Romania as ambassador for Sweden right after uh, Romania's successful first presidency of the Council of the European Union. And at the last uh, Swedish presidency in 2009, I was chairing one of those many working groups in, in Brussels. But today, and this time, I'm particularly honored to be representing the Swedish presidency in Romania that holds such a central place in the current geopolitical environment, a country that is such a staunch supporter of Ukraine and whose people uh, have been so helpful to the Ukrainian refugees. 
So the Swedish presidency has indeed begun as of 1st of January. And uh, today we're actually welcoming all the commissioners uh, in Kiruna, which is the most northern town in Sweden. Uh, and we do so hoping that they will experience a little bit uh, the, the conditions of, uh, of life uh, and transition in the most northern parts of, of Europe. Uh, hopefully they will see the uh, northern lights, the aurora borealis. That's up to the weather conditions. Uh, but, uh, but for sure, we will show them, for instance, the making of fossil free steel based on, uh, based on hydrogen, which is a revolutionary technique that will hopefully change completely the usually very pollution heavy fossil, uh, f um, steel, steel industry. I will now turn to the formal uh, presentation. So these are the buzzwords. Greener, more secure, freer. Um, I will start the presentation uh, with a short introduction by our Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Ulf Christesson. The challenges facing Europe may be greater than ever before. This calls for resolve. Building security for EU citizens, strengthening support to Ukraine and meeting the climate transition are now crucial tasks. We are interconnected and we are better together. The Swedish Presidency will work with determination for a greener, safer and a freer Europe. For increased European competitiveness and for a strong European voice in the world, for today and for the future. The presidency started, it will go on until the end of June, as normal. Uh, and this is, in fact, the third time Sweden holds the presidency. And uh, we aim to be very much an honest broker. And our duty is to advance the, the EU uh, agenda. All in all, we expect some 350 policy issues. There will be lots of legislation as the commission mandate period is, is drawing towards its end in two 2024, uh, and we will also deal, of course, with issues that we inherit from the previous presidencies. You heard the buzzwords, you heard the Prime Minister mention the, the priorities. Uh, these were indeed developed uh, together with the previous uh, government, and they have been agreed also, uh, have the support of the Swedish Parliament, and of course, they also draw on the TRIO program that was uh, brought together with uh, France and the Czech Republic. Security and unity. Here we feel our primary task is to help ensure Europe's security. The EU's rapid and determined response to the Russian aggression against Ukraine was a sign of strength and maintaining this unity, both as regards enhanced support to Ukraine and sanctions against Russian regime, will be a difficult but absolutely key task. And in light of the new geopolitical situation, political support for countries in EU's neighborhood will be deepened, and this includes supporting the Republic of Moldova. Internal security must be strengthened through better border surveillance and enhanced police cooperation. Green transition, energy transition. For Sweden, the EU is the most important platform for climate policy. Results are not achieved through individual national solutions. That's why the Swedish presidency aims to finalize negotiations on the uh, Fit for 55 climate package. This will not also not be easy uh, because countries have differing opinions, but it will be absolutely fundamental for creating conditions for the green transition. 
And in order for the EU to be able to rapidly reduce our dependence on Russian gas and other fossil uh, uh, energy sources, we need more fossil free and reliable electricity, including nuclear power. Uh, but always in respect for the right of each country to decide on its own energy mix. For example, forests can play an important role in this, both as a source of energy and as a basis for sustainable products. And the Swedish presidency is indeed prepared to take additional emergency measures to manage the energy crisis if needed. And in the first quarter of, the 20, of this year, uh, we may also see work begin on a major reform of the European energy market. Competitiveness. The EU needs to implement new reforms that strengthen European competitiveness. For the most part, the internal market works well in relation to goods, but it needs to be developed also for services and digital business models. As many of you know, this year is the celebration of the 30 years, years of the internal market. This is something that we want to mark and celebrate, not least by setting a long-term competitiveness agenda for the EU. A competitive economy is indeed a prerequisite, both for the green transition and for the EU to be ready and prepared for future crisis. Democratic values and the rule of law. Safeguarding the fundamental principles of liberal democracy is a core task for the Swedish presidency. Independent judiciaries, functioning democratic institutions are necessary for the mutual trust between us member states. We must be able to rely on agreements being complied with and that our common resources are being managed well. This is a matter of respect for taxpayers, for the European taxpayers' money, and upholding the values uh, of, of EU cooperation. And so we will take forward the Council's work on Article 7 in a constructive spirit, and we will stand up for EU's right to make the payment of EU funds conditional on the respect for rule of law. We do know at this point that Europe's geopolitical position has changed fundamentally and that the need for unity is greater than ever. So these, these are the general themes for the Swedish presidency and I'd now like to turn to uh, an important specific issue which we have taken over from the Czech presidency uh, and I will address it uh, with the priority that it deserves, which is the question of Schengen. As you know, Sweden voted in favour of Romania's entry into Schengen at the Justice and Home Affairs Council in December last year. And the Czech presidency and Romania really did everything they could to achieve a positive outcome. Unfortunately, Romania and Bulgaria were blocked. The Swedish Minister of Justice, who is in charge of the Schengen file in, in Sweden, immediately said at that minister's meeting that the then incoming Swedish presidency would continue working on the Schengen file. And this was again reconfirmed after the European Council uh, in December that uh, Sweden will continue to work. So we have indeed taken over this important file from the Czech presidency and we will work actively on this topic towards finding a solution. We will of course work very closely with Romania on this topic and with all other parties concerned and involved. The Schengen file will be on a formal council agenda meeting when the conditions are there, when the conditions are there, meaning that uh, the countries involved, uh, Austria, have changed its position in relation to Romania, and Austria and Netherlands have also solved their views and position on Bulgaria. This is what the Swedish presidency is committed to be doing and will be working actively towards. 
Finally, let me say that, like any presidency, we are, of course, prepared to deal with any new or deepened crisis at it may, may arise. And here you can follow us and read more about the Swedish presidency. Thank you very much for listening. Then I pass the floor to the Romanian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Bogdan Aurescu. Minister, please. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad to participate in the launching event of the Swedish Presidency of the EU Council in Bucharest, and thank you, Madam Ambassador Therese Hedden, for the invitation. I also take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation to the outgoing Czech Presidency, to Ambassador Kaiserova, for the efforts to advance the EU agenda during a very difficult semester. And I would also like to thank the representation of the uh, European Commission in Bucharest for hosting today's event. It is an opportunity, as always, to review together for the Romanian public, but also for the diplomatic community, the main directions of the European Union agenda for this semester under the mandate of the Swedish EU Council Presidency. Madam Ambassador Hedden, I wish you the best of success during the six months to come. Given the complexity of the current international environment, we need more than ever to advance our common EU agenda in a consensual manner to ensure that our response is both strong, resolute and effective. As Sweden has assumed through its program, and I quote from the program, our unity and readiness to act remain key to EU security, resilience and prosperity, end of quote. Romania stands by you in carrying on this approach. Now, security, resilience, prosperity, and very importantly, solidarity, as well as respect for the EU values, for democracy and the rule of law, are indeed essential ingredients for the future of the European project we are building together. Romania fully shares these objectives and acts as a reliable partner, translating them into practice and providing the highest standards of security and resilience for a united European Union. Deepening the European integration based on commonly applicable and respected values and rules is essential if we want the Union to respond to the expectations of our citizens and to be credible in its internal and external action. In this particularly challenging geopolitical context, shaken by the war at the gates of the EU, the answer must be more EU, more European integration, and more cooperation, and again, more solidarity. Consolidating the EU from the inside through increased solidarity and cohesion is the only path for projecting a stronger Europe, meaningful and influential in relation with our external partners. And it is not by accident that I am emphasizing the importance of solidarity. Solidarity of all member states is essential in connection to many highly important European files, such as the enlargement of the Schengen area. Joining the Schengen area is a major priority for Romania. The developments generated by the conflict in Ukraine proved once more that Romania has both the capacity and the will to respond effectively to major challenges. Romania has ensured an effective management of the EU's external border and acted as a de facto guardian of EU's security. Romania passed a resilience and again a solidarity test and showed that it is fully up to the task. Moreover, Romania has constantly acted as a trusted partner, contributing in a constructive manner to all discussions at EU level for the strengthening of the Schengen area. Bottom line is that Romania is and will continue to be part of the solution. Unfortunately, despite our active and continuous contribution to the EU's internal security and to the development of the Schengen acquis, and despite our full readiness to join the Schengen area as demonstrated by the clear assessments of the technical missions of October and November 2022, the December Justice and Home Affairs Council failed to reach unanimity in adopting the decision for Romania's accession. 
Romania was unfairly denied its legitimate expectation to conclude this complex process. Extending the Schengen area is part of the process of European consolidation. It should be a predictable process based on objective criteria. This is why adopting a positive decision regarding the accession to Schengen is essential for building a safer and more prosperous European Union. While expressing our gratitude for the European partners that support us in this endeavor, we are hopeful that through constructive dialogue, we will be able to complete this process as soon as possible. We firmly count on the support of the Swedish presidency to bring further this recent dynamic in view of completing the final steps for Romania's accession to Schengen. And I thank the ambassador for the words that were expressed here in our support. During my telephone discussion that I had yesterday with my Swedish counterpart, Minister Bilstrom, I was reassured by the fact that my distinguished colleague firmly reconfirmed the full support of Sweden for our goal. Minister Bilstrom mentioned that the Swedish presidency will get involved in an active manner in this file and that it will work hard towards a positive outcome based on a constructive dialogue with all European partners involved and will support Romania's efforts towards accession. He also expressed the hope to achieve progress and to identify solutions while emphasizing the legitimacy of our efforts. I am truly grateful to Minister Bilstrom for the priority allotted to this file. A few more things. The most important is to note that we are in the most favorable position so far. All EU member states, with only one exception, are on our side and in favor of our accession. Thus, through sustained diplomatic efforts, we managed last year to obtain the firm and active support of all other member countries. Our demarches and approaches on the topic of our Schengen accession will continue on an intense pace. We are not starting from zero, but we are building on everything we have achieved so far. And again, we have the support of all member states, minus one, of the European Parliament and of the European Commission. In fact, there have been already contacts in December with the Swedish presidency at the level of the president and the Swedish prime minister in the margins of the European Council. And I have already mentioned my discussion yesterday with Minister Bilstrom, but we have already discussed in the Foreign Affairs Council on the 12th of December. And we will discuss again on January 23rd during the next Foreign Affairs Council. I would like to mention here as well that in 2002, we have also achieved the completion of the Cooperation and Verification Mechanism, the CVM, which is a major accomplishment. The Commission latest CVM report on Romania concluded that our progress is sufficient to meet the CVM commitments made at the time of our accession and that monitoring will continue under the rule of law EU-wide general mechanism. We welcome the Commission's positive report and remain committed to the agenda of reforms and to cooperation through the annual rule of law mechanism applicable to all member states. In this context, let me stress that we do appreciate the Swedish presidency's commitment to pursue the Council's dialogue under the rule of law EU-wide general mechanism. Ladies and gentlemen, the last couple of years were marked by overlapped crises that have put to test EU's capacity of response. Unfortunately, the illegal, unprovoked and brutal Russian aggression against Ukraine and its multi-layered consequences are affecting us all. At this moment, we must continue our support for Ukraine. And I have discussed this in detail yesterday with my colleague, Minister Kuleba. We welcome the priority of the Swedish EU Council Presidency to stand firmly by Ukraine in cooperation with EU's trusted partners and through a strong transatlantic link. As we are approaching one year since the start of the aggression against Ukraine, a war with too many innocent victims and dramatic consequences, we take stock of how we coped and responded, while at the same time we are preparing for the steps ahead. We must continue our pressure on Russia, including through new sanctions. We must continue to isolate Russia at international level. We must continue our action to fight impunity in relation to Russia. And yes, we must also prepare for the reconstruction phase in Ukraine. 
We have proved that the EU is capable of managing even the most difficult challenges and we need to continue to act with the same unity and resolve. Romania's support to Ukraine continues to be manifold and evolving on several tracks. Romania reacted promptly and deployed all necessary efforts to ensure the best possible support for the refugees. We will continue to do so in the full spirit of European solidarity. We provided free medical services, education, access to labor market and public transport for over 100,000 Ukrainian refugees who chose to remain in Romania, the majority of them women and children. In total, almost 3.3 million Ukrainian citizens have crossed our borders. At the same time, Romania ensured through its territory and ports the transit of more than 11 million tons of grain and agricultural products, representing more than half of the Ukrainian exports made through the EU solidarity lanes. Romania remains firmly committed to support Ukraine and to contribute to stabilizing world food markets and improve global food security. Even if the work continues, we need to consider in parallel our efforts for the reconstruction of Ukraine. This is a crucially important process and we will be involved in this process. We will play our part in supporting Ukraine on this issue. It is also essential to continue providing a substantial support to the Republic of Moldova that is facing multiple challenges. The increased number of refugees, the severe energy crisis, as well as security risks. The energy crisis is particularly worrisome and Romania has acted as an important supplier of electricity for the Republic of Moldova. We consider necessary in the next period to make additional coordinated and integrated efforts at the European level in supporting the Republic of Moldova to cope with this challenge. But the ongoing war intensified the economic difficulties and the challenges pertaining to EU's energy security at European level. To enable the rapid mitigation of the economic consequences for the business affected by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we have adopted important common decisions meant to enhance the EU energy security. And the Swedish presidency will be instrumental in ensuring a swift and coordinated implementation of these measures. Romania will stand by the Swedish presidency in its firm commitment towards increasing the EU's energy sovereignty. We also appreciate the Swedish presidency's commitment to continue efforts on green transition by taking further the negotiations on the Fit for 55 package. This is why the final agreement on Fit for 55 package must strike a balance between ambition, reflection of national circumstances and mitigation of the social impact so as not to deepen economic disparities between member states. Romania remains firmly committed to meeting the environmental targets set at European level, ensure a stable backup from low carbon resources, such as nuclear energy and natural gas, and achieving a fair transition for all consumers. Addressing the economic consequences of the pandemic and of the war and the EU competitiveness represent additional central key topics on the EU agenda in the months to come. The implementation of the recovery plan for Europe is essential as we have to make sure that the consequences of this crisis will not further accentuate development gaps and deepen the impact on the most vulnerable categories. We should continue to act together and adapt our actions to the new realities. In addition, the forthcoming discussions on the economic governance review are essential to ensure that the fiscal and budgetary frameworks of EU member states are fit for the challenges of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, turning now to the priorities of EU's external action, we welcome the Swedish presidency commitment to strengthen the EU as a global actor. We agree that EU should continue to consolidate its leadership role in its neighborhood as well as worldwide to promote and safeguard the rules-based international order and fundamental values. Cooperation with like-minded partners, essential in times like these, should also be at the forefront of our external action. We strongly support the Swedish presidency in advancing the EU enlargement, which should remain one of our key priorities. Thanks to the political vision and commitment of all member states, the June 2022 European Council took the historic decision of granting candidate status for EU accession to Ukraine and the Republic of Moldova and of recognizing the European perspective of Georgia. We have been working hard to achieve these goals and Romania is actively supporting these new accession candidates on their European path and we will continue to do so. 
assisting their reform processes and the necessary progress in fulfilling the EU accession criteria is a token of our commitment to the future of the European project itself. The three editions of the Moldova Support Platform, which I initiated, co-organized and co-chaired together with my colleagues from Germany and France, in Berlin, in Bucharest and Paris, have been successful in mobilizing solid and concrete support for the economy and the democratic reform process also necessary for the accession to the European Union in the Republic of Moldova. We will intensify our efforts looking forward to the new conference to be organized in Chisinau and count on the EU institutions and all EU member states to continue to contribute to this solidarity effort. The current challenges also require a continuous engagement to advance the enlargement in relation with the partners in the Western Balkans based on a common commitment to the EU values including EU's external policy. The summit that recently took place in Tirana proved our determination to advance on this path. Anchoring the Western Balkans firmly to the EU remains our strategic objective, and we welcome the Swedish presidency's commitment in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, the war in Ukraine reconfirmed dramatically our constant stance on the need to pay more attention to the security developments in the EU's eastern neighborhood. The NATO Ministers of Foreign Affairs meeting, which I hosted in Bucharest last year, highlighted the Allies' common will to further strengthen deterrence and the defense posture on the eastern flank. It was also the first foreign ministerial with the participation of Sweden and Finland, as well as the first time to have the Republic of Moldova attending. This meeting also gave impetus to the adoption of the third joint declaration on EU-NATO cooperation, which was signed recently on the 10th of January. Romania particularly welcomed its message of unity and complementarity and will continue to substantially contribute to the implementation of the new priorities and lines of action as defined by the declaration. The meeting in Bucharest also pointed out the crucial role of the transatlantic relationship in ensuring the European security. So we welcome the Swedish EU Council presidency commitment towards a strong transatlantic link a priority that Romania fully supports. Romania will also continue to work hand in hand with Sweden in order to revitalize and adapt the Eastern partnership to the new geopolitical and regional context. I am pleased to recall the working meeting in EU 27 format that was held in the margins of the Foreign Affairs Council in December 2022 on how to relaunch the Eastern partnership and make it more effective. This was the result of a joint initiative that I put together with Minister Bilstrom and our Czech and Polish colleagues. Thus, we fully share the Swedish presidency objective of fostering closer ties between the Eastern Partnership countries and the European Union, including through the strengthening of the Eastern Partnership security dimension. Your Excellencies, we are going through troubling times, which require unity, again, solidarity, as well as an active commitment to consolidate the European Union we need to continue our future action in this spirit if we want the European Union to be a stronger and safer and more respected space that will continue to bring prosperity to all its citizens. Once again, let me wish the Swedish presidency every success. You can count on Romania's full support and engagement on all relevant issues on the European agenda, and we count on you as well. Thank you. Okay, then uh, thanking my uh, co-speakers, colleagues, for their interventions. We open the floor for the Q&A. Um, I hope you agree that since we started a bit later, we allow five more minutes after 11, so we have good quarter of an hour. The floor is yours. My colleague Maria Tufan over there and Julia Costa over there will be coordinating the room. Thank you. Questions? Bună ziua, uh, Cristian Citre, Euronews România. O întrebare pentru uh, doamna ambasador. Um, yes. Doamna ambasador, spuneați că Suedia va pune uh, subiectul... Okay. Um, spuneați că Suedia va pune subiectul... Uh, 
aderării României și Bulgariei la spațiul Schengen pe agenda JAI, în momentul în care va exista un acord din partea Austriei, din partea țării care s-a opus în decembrie. Credeți că Anul ace nu anul acesta, în timpul președinției țării dumneavoastră, acest subiect va ajunge pe, pe, agenda, pe agenda Consiliului uh, Jai, adică până la final de iunie. Vor fi cel puțin două Consilii uh, Jai până atunci programate. Mulțumesc! Thank you. I, I will still first just take the opportunity to, uh, to reciprocate on Foreign Minister Zarescu's uh, words, uh, the Swedish presidency feels the support and the solidarity of Romania during these six months. So thank you very much for, for that. On the question, we will work actively on this file. Minister Arescu mentioned an FAC meeting uh, 23rd of uh, January will be one opportunity for the involved parties to meet. Uh, I will mention a couple of other meetings uh, which will be relevant to advancing the Schengen agenda, such as the uh, informal Justice and Home Affairs meeting taking place in Sweden on 26th, 27th of uh, January. Also in February, on the 9th of February, there will be a special European Council dedicated specifically to migration issues. These will be, and leading up to those meetings, will be really important opportunities to have consultations. And I can, I can already say now that uh, the Swedish presidency has been approached uh, in relation to bilateral consultations with the uh, countries involved in this topic. Uh, so that will be happening. That is, the, the process has begun at what time it will be finished is probably too early to say. Uh, what we, the Swedish presidency, can commit to is to work actively with all the partners concerned and here uh, I am very pleased to, to hear about and to know of the close uh, contacts uh, between Foreign Minister Aurescu and, and his Swedish counterparts and uh, at the top level and within uh, several uh, ministers within the Swedish government and their Romanian counterparts. This will, of course, be helpful. Um, our doors are open uh, for consultations and we uh, encourage uh, those talks and we expect also a constructive uh, spirit for all the parties concerned. Thank you. Și o întrebare pentru domnul ministru Aurescu. Domnule ministru, în condițiile în care am avut ieri un verdict din partea Comisiei de Etică a Universității babes boioi în ceea ce privește plagiatul domnului ministru de interne Lucian Bode, credeți că procesul de aderare la Schengen în care ministerul și ministrul de interne este foarte implicat ar putea fi afectat de această situație? Mulțumesc! Mai întâi dați-mi voie să răspund și eu la, să adaug și eu ceva la răspunsul doamnei ambasador. Ieri am avut o discuție foarte bună, după cum am anunțat deja, cu domnul ministru Bilstrom, în continuarea discuțiilor pe care le-am avut deja pe 12 decembrie, în marja Consiliului Afaceri Externe de la Bruxelles. Discuția a fost foarte bună și edificatoare în ceea ce privește angajamentul puternic al Suediei de a se ocupa intens de acest subiect, de a lucra uh, activ, de a lucra uh, uh, cu multă intensitate uh, pentru uh, obținerea unui rezultat favorabil României. De asemenea, în discuțiile pe care le-am avut, uh, am fost informat, așa cum și doamna ambasador uh, a menționat aici, cu privire la lansarea procesului de consultări de către președinția suedeză cu toți partenerii implicați. Asta înseamnă cu, sigur, Comisia Europeană, cu Austria, cu Olanda, cu România și cu Bulgaria, în principal. De asemenea, trebuie spus că acest proces de consultări care va începe în perioada următoare nu va fi singular, va fi o serie de consultări. Pentru că trebuie să avem în vedere faptul că există o serie de condiții care trebuie să fie îndeplinite. Este clar că în ceea ce privește aderarea României și respectiv a Bulgariei, sunt două astfel de condiții care trebuie să fie realizate. 
În primul rând este vorba despre votul Austriei în ceea ce privește România și știm cu toții că în Austria în acest moment este o perioadă electorală, pe 29 ianuarie vor fi alegeri în Austria inferioară, deci cred că o schimbare de poziție în orice caz până la acea dată este puțin probabilă. În al doilea rând, în ceea ce privește Bulgaria, există un vot al Olandei pe lângă votul Austriei, ceea ce presupune că, la rândul său, colegii noștri bulgari, și îl salut cu mult respect pe domnul ambasador al Bulgariei la București, cu care avem o cooperare foarte bună, este necesar ca și colegii noștri bulgari să se implice în acest proces de consultări, inclusiv în vederea clarificărilor obiecțiilor și respectiv condițiilor pe care Olanda le pune în ceea ce privește aderarea Bulgariei la spațiu Schengen. Noi am început deja procesul de discuții, inclusiv cu partea austriacă. Vă readuc aminte că pe 9 decembrie am avut o primă discuție telefonică cu omologul meu, domnul ministru de externe Schallenberg, apoi pe 12 decembrie am avut o întâlnire bilaterală cu domnia sa și de asemenea mai multe discuții în marja Consiliului Afaceri Externe de la Bruxelles. Ne vom întâlni și în perioada următoare, iar cu domnul ministru Bilstrom vom continua consultările, pentru că ieri am stabilit că vom rămâne în contact telefonic direct și o ocazie pentru a mai schimba, iarăși, opinii cu privire la coordonarea acestui proces de consultări vor fi în marja Consiliului Afaceri Externe din 23 ianuarie. Deci nu va fi pe agenda Consiliului Afaceri Externe subiectul, pentru că nu este o temă de Consiliul Afaceri Externe, dar evident că orice ocazie de întâlniri la nivel european va fi utilizată pentru astfel de consultări. Prin urmare, este important să continuăm acest proces de implicare în discuții diplomatice și politice pentru a crea premizele pentru un context favorabil și aici mulțumesc din nou președinției suedeze pentru implicarea și decizia de a se implica într-un mod extrem de activ, într-un mod prioritar pentru a obține aceste condiții, dar în același timp nu trebuie să creăm așteptări grăbite. Într-adevăr, există și un Consiliu de Afaceri Interne informal, care însă nu ia decizii, pentru că orice Consiliu informal nu ia decizii, dar este iarăși o ocazie pentru astfel de discuții. Doamna ambasador a menționat și Consiliul din februarie, care însă se referă la migrație, nu se referă la uh, aderarea la uh, spațiul Schengen și trebuie să facem o distinție între uh, cele două uh, teme. În ceea ce privește uh, poziția ministrului de interne, cred că uh, dânsul este cel mai uh, îndreptățit să evalueze o astfel de situație. Eu până în prezent nu am identificat, uh, uh, spunem, semnale din partea uh, partenerilor europeni pe acest subiect. Vă mulțumesc! Bună dimineața, Marco, Vasile Marco Antena 3. Pentru domnul ministru Aurescu am și o întrebare. Am văzut că Bulgaria a făcut pași concreți în ceea ce privește relația cu Austria. La sfârșitul acestei luni, pe 23 ianuarie, ministrul de interne austriac împreună cu cancelarul austriac vor merge în Bulgaria pentru a evalua măsurile luate de partea bulgară pentru a vedea exact care e situația și cum poate să ajute Austria. România face sau are în vedere o clarificare a poziției cu Austria de genul acesta? Poate o discuție cu cancelarul Austria, pentru că de acolo vin toate obiecțiile, inclusiv de la ministrul de interne, sau să invite în România sau să aibă o discuție directă după 29, spre exemplu, ianuarie. Deci, încă o dată, vă mulțumesc pentru precizarea din final, pentru că, într-adevăr, eu cred că înainte de 29 ianuarie este puțin probabil să putem aștepta o schimbare de poziție. Pe de altă parte, vreau să reamintesc faptul că atunci când Austria a exprimat decizia sa de a nu vota, împotriva, de a nu vota pentru aderarea României la spațiul Schengen, nu a reproșat nimic României nu a cerut României să facă uh, ceva într-un anumit sens sau în altul. Sigur, a fost acea discuție despre uh, cifre uh, de emigrație care sunt contestabile, după cum știm, prin raportare la statisticile agențiilor europene, mai ales Frontex, uh, dar Austria, de fapt, a spus nu avem nimic împotriva României. Noi dorim să tragem un semnal față de Comisia Europeană ca să se implice mai activ în adoptarea de măsuri pentru a ajuta Austria să gestioneze mai bine uh, migrația. În același timp, vreau să subliniez, așa cum am spus-o deja în răspunsul anterior, că noi suntem deja în contact cu partea austriacă imediat după uh, momentul 8 decembrie. 
Deja pe 9 decembrie am avut, repet, o primă discuție cu colegul meu, pe 12 decembrie o a doua discuție și vom continua aceste discuții. Uh, inclusiv la nivelul cel, cel mai înalt, dacă este uh, necesar, dar sigur, cred că trebuie să așteptăm uh, 29 ianuarie. Bună ziua, doamna ambasadoare, Marizul pe televiziunea română. După cum știți, în momentul de față există o discuție la nivel european pe problema creierii unui nou plan de acțiune în chestiunea migrației. Iar partea austriacă a formulat o serie de propuneri în acest sens în ultima perioadă. Vreau să vă întreb care este poziția președinției Suediei pe această temă, dacă va răspunde și doleanțelor și motivelor de îngrijorare austriece, pentru că aceste probleme reprezintă de altfel una dintre condițiile care ar putea să schimbe și optica autorităților de la Viena cu privire la aderarea țării noastre și a Bulgariei în spațiul Schengen. Thanks. I believe Foreign Minister Andrescu made an important uh, point uh, pointing out that Uh, Austria's concerns uh, that led to uh, led to blocking Romania's entry into Schengen uh, does not solely have to do with Romania. This is a very important starting point. You ask about the uh, you ask about the uh, uh, huge uh, legislative package, the Asylum uh, and Migration Pact, which is a piece of legislative act that were introduced already in previous years and that will be continued to be negotiated during the Swedish presidency. However, uh, we cannot expect to finalize uh, that entire package during the Swedish presidency. Again, we will do whatever we can to advance this package, but we are not expecting it to be finalized. One reason is that it is a huge package of legislative uh, proposals and also uh, that these will be uh, difficult discussions. There is indeed no formal link between Schengen and the asylum and migration package. These are separate processes and we now stand to find out in more detail what are the concerns of Austria, what are the concerns of, of, of the Netherlands in in regard to Schengen, to the extent they are found within the field of the the negotiations on the asylum and migration pact, that will nevertheless happen. So be it. Uh, they will be uh, concerns can be discussed in that. I think more importantly, we will continue to take every opportunity at the meetings, informal meetings and formal meetings and in the margins of, of council meetings to address the, the concerns. That will be our, our main job. I think it's been clear uh, by our uh, ambassador in Brussels that uh, Sweden stands ready to negotiate this pact and of course the legislation on the asylum and migration is something that is proposed uh, by the Commission and the role of the presidency is of course to be the honest broker and to steer uh, the continued uh, negotiations on that file which is a separate uh, piece of legislation. Thank you. Dacă îmi permiteți, să, dacă îmi permiteți aș dori okay. doar să fac o precizare aici ca să nu se înțeleagă greșit. Deci există în acest moment în discuție la nivel european, iar președinția suedeză se concentrează printre obiectivele pe care le are în programul său pe această discuție referitoare la tratarea migrației la nivel european în ansamblu. Și aici este această discuție despre adoptarea pactului privind migrația și azilul, care este un proces, sau care, mă rog, este într-un proces de negociere și discuție la nivel european de câțiva ani în ceea ce privește preocupările care au fost transmise de către Austria. Aici e vorba despre o serie de solicitări punctuale, cum a fost, de exemplu, acel plan de acțiune privind tratarea migrației în Balcanii de Vest, care nu sunt neapărat conexate cu acest, această discuție mai amplă la nivel european. Deci nu 
putem să gândim și nici nu se pune problema și nici nu se va pune problema vreunei conexări a aderării României și respectiv Bulgariei la spațiu Schengen de pachetul mare de discuție și anume de pactul european privind migrația și azilul. Discutăm aici de o serie de solicitări punctuale ale Austriei, la care în ceea ce privește, de exemplu, planul de acțiune privind Balcanii de Vest, deja s-a răspuns, pentru că acel plan a fost deja prezentat pe 5 decembrie, înainte de summitul UE Balcanii de Vest de la Tirana. Mai sunt și alte astfel de solicitări și din informațiile pe care le avem, pentru că suntem în contact direct cu Comisia Europeană, Comisia deja lucrează pe o parte dintre aceste elemente. Prin urmare, trebuie să facem distinția între aceste chestiuni care sunt de ordin, să spunem, punctual sau specific, mai bine spus, și discuția mai amplă la nivel european, care se poartă deja de, mă rog, câțiva ani și care are un grad de complexitate mult mai, mult mai mare. Mulțumesc și eu pentru precizări. Aș vrea pentru ultima întrebare, colega noastră, vă rog. Well, I've got two questions. One is for Mrs. Uh, Ambassador. I'm Anna Harrison with Radio France International in Bucharest. You said that uh, the Swedish presidency will do its best to ensure that EU funds are paid to countries in accordance to the uh, respect of the law. What more can be done? Uh, we know that Hungary is suffering a little now. And for... Um, Mr. Aurescu, I think I heard you talking, you met Mr. Kuleba, uh, your counterpart from Ukraine, and I know that uh, your ministry hasn't been very happy with how the minority uh, law passed in Ukraine. Did you talk with Mr. Kuleba about it? Do you think they will change something? Thank you. Thanks for that question. Uh, I think the, the focus, the emphasis that the Swedish presidency will place on our common values uh, is absolutely crucial to uphold also the solidarity and the unity that has been mentioned several times during this meeting. And, that, and the practical effects of that is, of course, to ensure uh, that uh, our funds are used in the way they are supposed to use. Uh, Since a while uh, back, uh, the European Union agreed on a conditionality mechanism that allows for withholding funds in case they uh, stand at risk of being abused. And these are only EU funds that stand at risk of being, being abused. Uh, there are some strict uh, rules uh, when, when this applies, of course. Uh, that is what will need to be negotiated, and it has been, it, it is being tested now. Uh, what we, as the Swedish presidency, can, can say at this point is that we will continue to work on the conditionality mechanism. That will be an important first start, because this is a new mechanism, and it is the first time it is being tried out now. That will be the starting point. Whether more needs to be done remains to be seen, but the conditionality mechanism, of course, applies to all of us, all EU member states, in the application of the EU funds to which we have been granted. Thank you. Well, I will answer in, uh, in English. Uh, and, uh, well, but I will answer in English. You ask in English, so I will tell you in English. So, um, uh, yes, um, as you very well know, uh, we have expressed uh, our very clear position on the um, uh, adoption uh, in December of uh, the law on uh, minorities in uh, Ukraine and on uh, uh, national communities. Um, and um, uh, we have expressed our uh, view um, with both, uh, you know, uh, positive and negative aspects that we have uh, found out. On one hand, uh, we noticed that there are some uh, positive uh, improvements regarding the uh, um, piece of legislation which was adopted in comparison with pre previous uh, versions that were put uh, uh, forward for uh, for debate in the uh, Ukrainian parliament on the other hand there are there are also in our view uh, some uh, aspects which uh, still need to be uh, improved uh, 
um, the both uh, both uh, uh, President Johannes and President uh, Zelensky discussed on the 4th of January over the phone uh, on many other issues, but they have also discussed about this uh, law on minorities, and they decided to entrust the two foreign ministers, uh, myself and, uh, and Minister Kuleba, to um, uh, find solutions. And uh, that is why yesterday I had a, a very good um, uh, phone conversation with uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Kuleba, and uh, I have, of course, reiterated uh, our uh, position, our concerns, and we have decided to launch a process of uh, consultation in order to address the issues uh, which uh, we have flagged out as problematic uh, in this uh, uh, new piece of uh, legislation. We have decided to have uh, uh, consultations at both expert level but also at our level of the Ministers of Foreign Affairs. And this is what we are going to do in the uh, following uh, period. So uh, it is a process uh, and um, I think it is positive that we have agreed that uh, we will uh, consult each other and that uh, our concerns will be taken uh, into account because um, um, we all remember uh, the uh, promise of uh, President Zelensky that uh, the national um, uh, minority, the Romanian national community in, uh, in Ukraine will be um, uh, given uh, the same uh, regime of rights and, uh, and uh, uh, privileges as um, uh, enjoyed by the uh, um, Ukrainian community in uh, Romania. So this is a process that, uh, that will uh, go on, uh, and of course we will inform everybody in the following period uh, of the outcome of this process. Thank you. And I thank uh, all of you for the questions, and we wrap up not before I also take the opportunity to reiterate in front of you um, the strong support of the European Commission for the accession of Romania and Bulgaria to Schengen. This is a message and an evaluation we have been explaining since 2011. With Romania and Bulgaria in Schengen, we are stronger, not weaker, in Europe. We are safer and not more endangered in Europe, and we are more prosperous and more attractive as a single market for our international partners. Uh, and also, this is um, my, um, I have had the pleasure of accompanying the Slovenian, the French, and the Czech presidency, and now the Swedish presidency. And it is always an extraordinary pleasure to see how each nation state uh, becomes an honest broker at European level, putting their fingerprint on the way they present themselves and on their priorities. And because Romania had also its presidency 2011, I would like to reiterate the fact that in Sibiu, we have signed the declaration of Sibiu and what we call in European Commission the spirit of Sibiu, which means that each member state shares the responsibility with the European institutions to communicate on the European project. So in not scapegoating, they in Brussels, we here, or any other type of narrative, but we are together communicating our European unity to our own European citizens, as we have seen today. So thank you very much. Please stay a while for coffee and breakfast in the other room for networking, and thank you. We wish you all a good year.